Tabs are robbing you out of your true potential. I'm going to tell you why and how you can break free. In 2003, I learned this lake from Tabs. <laughs> to this day, I still don't know what I'm doing. And it shouldn't be this way because I've unlocked my fretboard. I know where the notes are. Most other leads I play like Symphony of Destruction. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know what notes I'm hitting, so I don't make as many mistakes. And why? Because I've learned it by ear. Because learning with tabs takes the focus away from the guitar neck and over to the tabs. You know, thinking 15, 12, 12, that doesn't mean anything. It's not music. But thinking E minor triad. Now this is music. This means something. And I've made this mistake with past students as well. You know, they would want to learn a song. I'd learn it first, write out the tabs and show it to them. But I realized that I failed them as a teacher. I didn't teach them how to pick up stuff on their own. So that's why my goal now is to teach people to not need me anymore. Because music isn't made from dots and numbers on a page. It's, it's notes, it's sounds, it's scales, chords, arpeggios. But I know what you'll say. Raph, I can't learn songs by ear. I don't have perfect pitch. Why are you trying to make me feel bad for using tabs, right? Well, I don't have perfect pitch either. I have relative pitch. The good news is everybody can improve their relative pitch. Does that mean that I only rely on my ears when I'm trying to pick up a solo, right? That I'm trying every note on the fretboard until I drop on the right one and repeat that process 200 times for the whole lead? Oh God, no, that would be insane. What truly really helped me is that I've unlocked enough of my fretboard to make an educated guess. And that puts me in the ballpark very close to what's being played. But I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'm gonna teach you the exact theory that I learned that allowed me to learn songs by ear and to also understand what I'm playing so I can apply this to other stuff. So first, learn the E minor pentatonic all over the fretboard. When learning scales, the goal isn't to learn to play them fast at all. It's just to know where the notes are. Playing the pentatonic, you'll learn the root, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the seventh. Each note is the root of a chord in the scale. One, four, and five will be minor chords. So in our case right now, it's E minor, A minor, B minor. And remember this shape, right? These three chords, I like to see it as a triangle. Weezer have made a whole career with these three chords. Three and seven will be our major chords. In our case now, it's G and D. Congrats, you just learned all of the minor pentatonics. What? For example, we have the A minor pentatonic. It's exactly the same patterns, but starting on the fifth fret, followed by the same order of patterns. And again, the first, the fourth, and the fifth will always be minor, the third and the seven, will be major. Next, you learn the E minor scale. I mean, you already know five of the seventh note, right? Add the second and the sixth, and you know your minor scales. The sixth is a major chord. The second is the weird one. It's a minor with a flat five. It's a diminished chord. You will not hear that chord a lot outside of jazz. Most rock and pop band will avoid this chord entirely either by playing the regular power chord, playing the sixth, or the third and the sixth. Don't focus too much on this chord just yet. And just like that, you know every minor scale is on a fretboard. Because again, it's the same pattern, only the starting position changes on the neck. You want another trick? You remember how your one, four, and five are minor chords? Remember this shape? And your three, six, seven, or major. The two patterns are only three frets away. Now, this is not a coincidence. E minor is the relative minor to G major, meaning that G major and E minor have the exact same seven notes in their scales. Chord number four, A minor, is the relative major to C which is the sixth chord. And finally, B minor is the relative minor to D major, our seventh chord. 
So you don't even have to remember your major chords. If you know your three minor chords, you know your three major chords because you know that they're three frets away or if you remember their relative, that's all you need. And all that's left to remember is that the second is the word one, it's the diminished. For example, was that G sharp minor? It's the exact same pattern. My one, four and five or minor, in our case, G sharp minor, C sharp minor and D sharp minor. And I know that three frets away are my major, in this case, B, E and F sharp. And again, for the second degree, we have a little weirdo. This seems a bit complicated right now. Just pick up your guitar and play it. It's gonna make a lot more sense as you're doing it. And this is my favorite way to visualize chords on the neck because it's not information learned by heart. It's visual pattern. And right now you're probably thinking, yeah, dude, you said E minor and G major have all the same notes, right? Does that mean that now I know G major? Yes, it does. You know the G major and the G major pentatonic. That position two of E minor pentatonic, it's position one of G major pentatonic. Now you almost have everything you need. All that's missing is the triads, aka chord tones. Knowing these will take so much guesswork away from learning solos by ear. Let's start with the E minor triad. I got root, third, and fifth. In this case, E, G, and B. If I play an open E minor chord, I got E, B, E, G, B, and E. Let's play a major one, G major. I got G, B, and D, right? So root, third, and fifth. How about that G major open chord? I got G, B, D, G, B, and G. Every regular chords, open or barred, are made of these three notes, root, third, and fifth. When we play three, it's called a triad. If we play four, it's called a one octave arpeggio. Jump it up to seven, it's a two octave arpeggio. But again, it's the same three notes. So let's focus on the shapes you'll see most often. We're still in E minor, so E, A, and B are the minor chords. We're looking for the root on the second string, so the E is on the fifth fret, so we got E, G and B. And remember this pattern, this triangle, because this is your minor shape. So where's the A on the same string, 10th fret? Well, guess what? Same triangle, same shape. You got your A minor triad. So A, C, and E. And then at the 12th fret, I got my B. Same shape, my B triad is B, D, F sharp. And now for the major chords, remember we had G, C, and D. So the G on the second string is at the eighth fret. So we got G, B, and D. Now this is my major triad shape. The C is on the 13th fret. So we got C, E, and G. And finally the D on the 15th fret. D, F sharp, A. You've heard of Metallica? Bye bye guesswork. When you know your arpeggios, you can find that lick super quick. There's another shape that's very popular. It's with the root on the first string, sitting between the fifth and the third. So let's say for E on the 12th fret, I got the B, same fret on the second string, and then the G on the first string, three frets away from the E. Remember this shape. We got B, E, and G. Now the A is on the fifth fret, so I got E, A, C, the B is on the seventh fret, so I got F sharp, B, and D. I'm going a bit faster now because the concept is important here, not to remember all of this right away. Now for the major shape, the major third is four frets away from the root. So you have this shape. So the G is on the third fret, so I got D, G, and B. The C is on the eighth fret, so I got G, C, and E, and the D is on the 10th fret. So I got A, D, F sharp. Is your head full yet? I hope so. Scale, chords, triads. If you know these, you can play 95% of what you'll hear in heavy metal and pop music. So stick around for more content like this. Thanks for watching, guys.
Cheers.